We're going to explain Rahu and Ketu in Aries and Libra. And in order to explain that, first of all, we need to be clear about what Rahu and Ketu are all about. And in order to understand what Rahu and Ketu are all about, it's very important to understand astronomically what Rahu and Ketu are. Once you understand that, it becomes very easy to understand what they symbolize. So, this little diagram here has a symbol representing the Earth in the middle of it. And around that, let's draw the apparent orbit of the Sun, which is synonymous with the ecliptic, the path of the Sun. Now, let's add to this diagram the apparent orbit of the Moon. Now, as you can see, the Moon's orbit crosses the Sun's orbit at two points and these two points are Rahu and Ketu that's what we name these two points Rahu and Ketu or North and South Node or Ascending and Descending Nodes so why these names? Rahu you see it's up there on the top of the diagram it's the place where the moon crosses the sun's path going north of the ecliptic coming up so that's why it's called the North Node, or the Ascending Node. And K2, it's down there in the bottom of the diagram. You see it's where the Moon crosses the ecliptic going south of it. So it's descending there. It's the South Node or the Descending Node. This is the basis for everything that Rahu and K2 symbolize, because the basis of what Rahu and K2 symbolize is Rahu is up and K2 is down. Everything else almost everything else makes sense just from that. So for example, Rahu is all about big things, high things, amplified things. That's what Rahu does. It amplifies and exaggerates. Whereas K2, on the other hand, it's all about deep things. Things that are getting more compressed, more compacted, more small. Another ramification of up is out coming up north of the ecliptic means becoming visible coming to the daylight sphere so rahu also signifies out outwardness extraness externals so this is why rahu is extroversive and loud and this is why rahu is thought of as worldly or materialistic because it's about externals whereas k2 it's going in so it's not about externals, it's about internals. This is why K2 is quiet and introversive. And this is why K2 is not associated with worldliness or materialism, but with spirituality and psychology. And the third ramification of up is going forward. Right? It's going forward, going into the future, making progress, getting higher, making progress. So Rahu has to do with forward motion. It pushes towards the future. Whereas K2 is associated with backwards. It wants to go back. It wants to return to things. Now that's very important information, but you, there's one part of Rahu and K2's symbolism which is still not yet described. And that has to do with another astronomical fact. Look again at the diagram of their orbits. What you'll notice is that something tricky happens at those spots where the moon crosses the sun's path. What is it that happens there? Well, if the sun and the moon get to that spot at the same time, then they bump into each other. Right? They get in each other's way. And this is what causes eclipses. If the sun and the moon get to one of these nodes, Rahu and Ketu, at the same time, then you get a solar eclipse. And if the sun and the moon get to the opposite nodes at the same time, then you get a lunar eclipse. And so the fact that Rahu and Ketu are the eclipse points, that is the missing bit of what they symbolize that we haven't yet covered. What is an eclipse? It's a sudden, radical, startling change. It was day, and then all of a sudden, it's night. This is 
essential to understand about both of the notes, Rahu and Ketu. They signify change. And not just any change, but eclipse-like change. So they signify instability, not slow change, not planable change. Sudden change, which brings uncertainty, which is fearsome and fearful and is chaotic. And an eclipse is, again, not just like a stable, gradual change. An eclipse is radical and outside of your power to control at all. So the final bit about Rahu and Ketu is they have an inevitability towards their effects. And so they signify things which are changing beyond our control, outside of our control. And this is why they have to do very much with obsessions, addictions, compulsions, etc. Things that you can't control. Now, that is everything that you should know about Rahu and K2 right there on one little page and one little diagram. Let's now think about Rahu and K2 in Aries or Libra. Now, that's the, the other special thing about Rahu and K2. If you look one more time at that diagram of their orbits, the moon and sun's orbits and where Rahu and K2 are, you'll notice that they are 180 degrees apart. And they are always... 180 degrees apart from each other. If you have Rahu in Aries, you know that you have Ketu in Libra. Or if you have Ketu in Aries, you know that you have Rahu in Libra. There's nowhere else it could be. It can only be in the opposite sign. And so the way that we think about the nodes in signs can doesn't have to be exactly the same as the way we think about planets in signs because planets are only in one. But the nodes are in two at, at one time. They're in the opposite sides. So what we can do here is think about the, the nature of that pole, the, the Aries-Libra pole, and ask what is synergistic about this pole and what is antithetical about this pole. What's, what do Aries and Libra have in common and where are they antagonistic? What's synergistic about these two signs? Well, first of all, they're both cardinal. Cardinality is goal-oriented. It is in the process of setting a new goal, which is far off and ambitious. So cardinality is ambitious, very ambitious, and goal-oriented. Not timid, thinks big. The other thing that they have in common is Aries is fire and Libra is air. The nature of this fire-air um, complementality is something that you should visualize in order to get a feeling for what Rahu and Ketu do in Aries and Libra. Fire and air, it's catalytic, it's energetic, it's starting things, it's getting things going, it's motivated, it's moving. So how should we read this or how should we interpret this? Well, they always exaggerate things. They either exaggerate or intensify Rahu and Ketu. The things about the two signs that are synergistic will get pleasantly amplified. So what you can expect for charts where Rahu is in Aries or Libra, this person is probably very motivated, very ambitious, very bold, very brave, very adventurous. Now, how about the clashes between Aries and Libra? Well, fire and air have one thing about them which is synergistic. They work well together, but also... They have one thing about them which is antagonistic. It's that fire hurts, but air is pleasant. Fire is painful, but air is pleasant. Fire is intense, but air is relaxed. It's a breeze. So that's, a, that's one clash. The other clash about Aries and Libra is that Libra belongs to Venus and Aries belongs to Mars. Those are opposite planets. Those planets signify opposite things. It's the archetypical hard spectrum male, Mars, and the archetypical hard spectrum female, Venus. And specifically, Mars is very me-focused, and Venus is very us-focused. So how will you interpret this aspect? 
again, they're gonna, the, the notes are going to do the same thing. They're going to amplify and intensify, but when they're amplifying something nice, then it gives a nice result. Now, when we're talking about the clashes, they're amplifying something not nice, so let's call it exaggerating. Rahu Ketu will exaggerate the clashing polarities between the two signs they occupy. So when you see a chart with Rahu in Aries or Libra, the native almost certainly has a challenge or a difficulty on this topic, some kind of topic of clashing fire, air, and Mars, Venus. So for Mars, Venus, it's like self versus partnership, me versus us, or freedom versus commitment. And what Rahu Ketu do by exaggerating the polarities is they create the illusion that these two things, self and partnership, me and us, are very different. They create the illusion that the interest of one is not the interest of the other. And like still saying, freedom is one thing. Commitment is another. Freedom and commitment, they, they can't sit in the same space any more than East and West could be the same. That's what Rao and Ketu do. They give this illusion of hard opposites. And the people, I mean, everybody has Rao Ketu somewhere, so we all have this illusion somewhere in our life about what we think is antithetical to something else, but actually it's really not. And what happens is the people will tend to pick which side they favor. Maybe they favor commitment. Maybe they favor freedom. Maybe they fa favor the partner. Maybe they favor themselves. And then they'll just commit and sacrifice the other one because they're be believing or buying into the lie that Rahu and Ketu are telling, that they're completely opposite. So people with Rahu and Ketu and Aries and Libra, they really need to stop and think about important facts like, what is us? Us has two me's. So how can you think that me will not be served when us is served? Freedom, commitment. How can you have freedom when you have no responsibilities? Your life is complete chaos. You, com you become limited by the chaos and disabled by the amount of chaos in your life. Your commitments, your regularity, your discipline. That gives you a stable platform on which you can be creative. But Rahu and Ketu don't let you think like that very easily. You have to make an effort to think like that when you have Rahu Ketu and Aries and Libra. And the thing about fire and air, it will result in like having a huge aversion to pain or a huge aversion to pleasure and oscillating between the two and confusing the two. One final important thing to say about how to interpret nodes and signs. It will make a difference, of course, whether Rahu is in Aries or if Rahu is in Libra. It's not the same interpretation. Rahu will always want more of the topic because it's like big. And Ketu will always want less because it tries to compact. So, for example, if you have Rahu in Aries, you're going to expect people to be favoring this, the, the meanness, the independence, the freedom, and wanting less of the commitment and the discipline that goes with commitment. Whereas if Rahu is in Libra, you're going to find people sacrificing themselves for some greater good, sacrificing themselves for their partner, um, forgetting that their health and their wellness is important to the partnership because they're part of the partnership. So let's look at some actual people who have the nodes in Aries and Libra and that will hopefully take some of this theory and crystallize it and make it a little bit easier to grasp. So here are what I would call archetypical people who are really helpful to exemplify the nature of nodes in Aries and Libra. So we'll start with some who have Rahu in Aries. Neil Armstrong, the world's most famous astronaut, 
going up, going out into space. Very adventurous, very ambitious, very bold, very independent, all that kind of stuff that makes an astronaut. Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner, I think, is important to keep on this list because... It shows the importance of keeping the abstract idea in your mind as you're interpreting something. The abstract idea is Mars versus Venus. And basically all of these things about us, me, or partnership, um, commitment versus freedom is really masculinity versus femininity. And Caitlyn Jenner, you see this very big swing between masculinity and femininity. Marilyn Manson, an absolutely horrific person. Kylie Minogue, very, very adventurous, hedonistic, sexy. Tracy Lords, Kylie Minogue, Tracy Lords, Amber Heard. They have Rahu and Aries. And if you really want to get clear about what I mean by Rahu is more, Rahu sign is more and Ketu sign is less, then look at who is the first name in the Ketu and Aries list. It's Anais Nin. I think if you compare Anais Nin with Amber Heard, it will nicely illustrate the principle. Anais Nin is also obsessed with relationships, but she was unable to define herself independent of the person who loved her. She absolutely required the person to love her. Whereas Amber Heard is just Amber Heard, and she just uses you for herself. She's not concerned with you at all. So there's a very big, um, exaggerated example in these two individuals, which helps you to see how how different it can be, depending on where you have Rahu. Anais Nin is a classic Rahu Libra, versus Amber Heard is a classic Rahu Aries. Tina Turner also, like another Anais Nin. Michael Jackson also. Shakira, Madonna, all these people, very sexy, very adventurous, very bold, very outgoing, very hung up on relationships, big issues with relationships. Like They need the partner, they need the crowd, they need the love. Finally, have John Lennon, and John Lennon is also, I think, a very classic Rahu Libra person. In fact, Winston Churchill is a Rahu in Aries person whose name didn't wind up on this list. But Winston Churchill is a good contrast with John Lennon. Winston Churchill's oscillation between conservatism and liberalism. John Lennon, very, very liberal. So those are some archetype examples of people that can put a face on the interpretation of Rahu and Ketu in Aries and Libra. Let's look at some atypicals and clarify why they're atypical. So you don't get some misconceptions. So you have Nikola Tesla, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, oh, and Winston Churchill. I guess I put him as an atypical. So you can get the misconception that Rahu in Aries is very intelligent because you have Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, Nikola Tesla. But that's not what Rahu and Ketu is all about. It doesn't have anything to do with intelligence. It has to do with ambition. And it has to do with the, the, uh, the me-us dynamic. The male-female dynamic. Winston Churchill, you think, maybe Rahu and Ketu and Aries and Libra makes you a great politician. It's not. Just because a politician that has Rahu and Ketu and Aries and Libra doesn't mean Rahu and Ketu and Aries and Libra makes you a politician. So look at the salient... Um, features of their charts. So for Nikola Tesla, he has a domicile Mercury. Of course he's smart. It's not Rao and Ketu that are making him smart. It's his domicile Mercury, who's the fifth lord. So he's a domicile fifth lord Mercury. So of course he's smart. Moreover, he has Moon and Jupiter in mutual aspect. Carl Jung, how is he such a great psychologist? Well, he has an exalted moon. Of course he's a good psychologist. Oh, he's an exalted moon in the fourth house. And it's in an exchange with the Eighth Lord. Sigmund Freud, why is he a great, smart psychologist? He's the Fifth Lord in the Fifth House, like Nikola Tesla. But it's Jupiter and Pisces. 
is the moon in the eighth house in the intelligent Gemini and is the first lord in the twelfth house with K2. Of course, he's all mystical and psychological and intelligent. That's not coming from his nodes. It's coming from his Jupiter, moon, and first lord. Winston Churchill, why is he a big, powerful leader? Well, he's a sixth lord in the sixth house. Of course, he's very strong. And guess what? It's Saturn in Aquarius. And besides that, he's got K2 conjoined Jupiter while Jupiter is in Raja Yoga. So he's got a Raja Yoga on top of that. So I think it's also important not just to talk about the people who are typical, but also the people who are atypical so you don't get misconceptions. The main thing about Ron K2 in these notes is very adventurous, very motivated, very brave, very lusty, hungry. And then they have an issue of me at odds with the partnership or the commitment to something at odds with my personal freedom. And depending on where Rahu is, they'll tend to favor one over the other. But what they really need to do is not try to pick which one to favor and sacrifice the other, but to realize that these are not opposites. These are two parts of one integrated thing. So if you want to get your Rahu K2 interpretations as well as interpretations for all of your planets in your signs, houses, aspects, yogas, so on and so forth, everything about your chart, you can get my complete chart overview by going to my website, victorcara.com, and you can click to find it, or you can just put a forward slash and then an R2 to get to the second reading, R2, and order that report there. Thank you so much. I will see you again soon for more awesome videos about Round K2 in the Zodiac Signs.